Good morning guys, we are up bright and early off to an adventure. Today we are taking our Mustang Mach E off the beaten path into the mountains and through some incredible scenery. So we are going to try to make our way up to this precious town northeast of the city of San Bernardino called Big Bear Lake. This is one of the most popular lakes throughout Southern California and it's a really special place for us too. So today we are going there as our last trip for the summer vacation and we really want to see how the mountain affects the range on this Mach E. So this city is about 50 miles away from us and maybe an hour and 20 minutes drive but what is interesting is Big Bear Lake is officially at an elevation of 6,752 feet above sea level. Now we've had our Mustang Mach E for about two years and a half now and we have not driven it over mountain passes yet. Now essentially we live on the top of a hill and we do notice this affects the range quite a bit going down the hill is usually normal but going up the hill back home the mileage is always terrible so i am really excited to take you guys all along with us today to see how the mach e does on the mountain and to show you some neat spots and just to show you all the beauty of this town so we got the car backed up i got charged up to 98 percent and we have 257 predicted miles which i think it's enough to get us up the mountain and to our charging station so i say let's hit the road We are driving right now on Beer Valley Road, but I'm about to make a right on Highway 18. This is going to take us through Lucerne Valley and then all the way up the mountain to Big Bear. We are passing through this small town of Lucerne Valley, but I just want to mention this little shop here. It is called Cadillac Antiques. I really like it. We used to come here a lot, but sadly it has been closed for a few years now. But if it ever does open, I highly recommend you guys check it out if you are in town. All right, guys, so we are right now at the base of the mountain. This is the Mitsubishi cement factory. And right now we have on the battery 87% and we are averaging about 3.3 miles per kilowatt. So let's see how she does up the winding road to Big Bear Lake. Look at this, we found ourselves a nice little viewpoint. It feels so good up here. And they have hiking trails too. This right here is a trailhead marker. And up that way is the Pacific Crest Trail. That way leads to Mexico. And then this way leads clear across to Canada. It's a quite of a hike. We've done parts of it before, but just be prepared if you come this way. And the car is actually doing a great job so far. I am surprised and we only have like 12 miles to get to Big Bear, so let's go. So we have made it here. We are officially right now in Big Bear City. And right now we're just heading to the Big Bear Village so we can park the car and charge it. Here in California, we had a really wet winter last season and you can tell the lake is actually pretty full this year. We are here now. Surprisingly, the car took the mountain like a champ and we got here at 78% left on the battery. Right now, I have it plugged in in this charge point charger. It's a level two charger, so it's a little bit slower. But even though we don't need it, honestly, because going back home, it's all going to be downhill. But we're just going to top it off anyway, since we're going to be hanging out by the village and get you guys some scenery. 
The Big Bear Village is definitely my favorite place to visit every time we come here. They have a variety of stores and restaurants and the street is always decorated nice for the season. We love coming here for Christmas season because they always do an amazing job decorating. But this time they had beautiful flowers everywhere which made the walking even more pleasant. It is just very dreamy. Our first stop once we roll into town is this ice cream shop. It is called Ben & Jerry's which is an iconic ice cream shop in the village and it's just known for its delicious ice cream. They have a great selection of flavors and you can tell the staff are really nice and they want you to always feel welcome. So we've tried a few different flavors throughout the years and they all are so delectable. My mouth just waters thinking about it. And after we left the ice cream shop, we found ourselves a nice sitting area and it was so nice to be able to sit outside and enjoy our ice cream which was a great little snack. So once we finished with that, we just strolled along by Nut Avenue and looked at all the beautiful buildings and we made our way into the iconic coffee shop, the Copper Q. It's a great little coffee and tea shop. The atmosphere is really homey and inviting. They offer pastries, bagels, delicious handicrafted drinks and sandwiches and they sell lots of like kitchen items, knickknacks and unique gift ideas. I bought a cute apron from here before great quality they also have a retail section with different flavors of honey seasoning and dressings and you can actually play checkers and other games while you're sipping on your coffee and eating your snacks so definitely check the spot out if you ever go to the village i just got a cup of coffee to enjoy on our walk and it was actually really neat too because while we were there there was actually live music just outside the coffee shop which was kind of Nice. So we sat there for a little bit and enjoyed the music. After we enjoyed the music, we walked along the village and headed to the marina to see the lake. And along the way, on both sides of the street, you see cute little shops, which is an incredible unique collection of a bunch of different little stores, boutique shops, markets, and restaurants. We really enjoy all the markets because you are able to grab some snacks and check out all of the other fun stuff to see. And there are plenty of seating areas and outdoor fire pits where you can actually sit and rest your feet it is absolutely breathtaking and so so beautiful we love strolling around and exploring they also have a movie theater did you guys watch the barbie movie i didn't yet but i cannot wait to see it One of the things I really wanted to try was the horse carriage ride. That seemed super fun, but we didn't have a chance to do it today, though I'll be sure to check it out the next time we're in town. And we also passed by the Robin Hood Resort. We didn't go inside, we just kind of took a look on the outside. The Bear Robin Hood was definitely my favorite. And once we crossed the street, we got to the Pine Nut Marina and here we were able to look at the lake and it was just really stunning and incredibly peaceful. So that was such a treat. And then we also walked down to the water and enjoyed these cute little waves. You can rent a boat, jet to skis if you want. It is so fun, but it is not something we do every single time we come here. So typically we'll just roam around the lake, look at the beautiful view of the water and take it in. Once we were finished with the lake, we walked back to our car and on the way we popped into one of our favorite stores and I just absolutely love looking at the architecture. You also see a lot of bear statues around here which makes it more fun. It really never gets old. That was so much fun. However, Big Bear still has one more trick up its sleeve that I cannot wait to show it to you guys. So let's head over there right now. 
Now our next stop on the agenda today was the pirate ship which is located at the Hallways Marina on the southwest side of the lake and thanks to its elevation at almost 7,000 feet this ship is considered the highest pirate ship so that was definitely one of the reasons we wanted to go on it and this ship name is Time Bandit named after the movie she was featured in in 1981 and it has been sailing these mountain waters since 1998. The captain of the ship and the crew was really funny and if you are in the mood for something bold and bubbly they have a bar on the ship so drinks are available and the tour was about 90 minutes and even though it was super windy at the lake today, we really enjoyed learning about the history of Big Bear and just being on the water. It was so much fun, especially for the kids. They had a treasure chest surprise for the kiddos, which was a nice touch. And that was my son's first time ever on a ship, but thankfully he didn't get seasick. The scenery, both natural and man-made, is beautiful and the captain explained a little bit of history of how Big Bear was formed and named, plus he pointed out some interesting homes, which was nice. We passed by the Treasure Island, also known as China Island. I believe this is the only island on the lake and it has a Chinese architecture theme with several China huts built on top of granite rocks. Treasure Island is also known as one of of the best places to swim in Big Bear Lake. The captain said this rock had to be written on it and that every kid who grew up here has been up there at least once or twice to try to tip it over the edge but no one has ever managed to pull that off. And before we turned back around, we got to see the dam up close from the back side as well. And just a little bit about the dam, Big Bear Lake is a man-made lake. And in 1883, plans were made to construct a rock dam that would hold water to supply the citrus farms in the Redlands. And in 1885, the first water began to flow and the first dam held 25,000 acre feet of water. Now the new arch wall dam that was constructed by John Eastwood was completed in 1912 and stood 20 feet higher than the original rock wall dam which doubled the size of Big Bear Lake. This was a great fun experience and it was educational too. All kids on board really enjoyed it and they had a great time. We got some pirates money for the dinner right now so we gotta wrap up this video. We had such a blast driving the Maki around today, seeing the sights and seeing more Big Bear and all in all I think she did a great job going up that mountain we got an amazing range and i really like that charging station that we used today by the village because we are always coming to the village so it's so handy to have it there and actually something that we're really looking forward to in 2024 all maki owners were going to get an adapter so we can use tesla chargers and i can only imagine that's going to improve the whole maki charging situation even more but that's all for you guys today i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please thumbs it up consider subscribing thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye